All right, James Creedon's with us in the studio now because it's time for Media Watch. Hi, uh, hi there, James. Good to see you. Um, you're studying right here uh, in France. Um, now, it's a topic that comes up again and again uh, here in France, isn't it? Sexism and the extent of it. We've talked about it in the media, uh, in Parliament, mm -hmm. with the female MPs being heckled by their male That's counterparts. Right. We'll, we'll, in, we'll get to that as well. We'll talk about that uh, in a bit later. But you, you're, you're looking specifically at, at newspaper headlines and how when you get a female personality, they tend to be referred to by their first name right. and males by their second names. What's That's that about right. Uh, well, it, it, there's one story in particular that has drawn attention to it, and it actually concerns uh, a colleague here at France 24. Uh, you'll see the headline here. Uh, Van Vanessa replaces Lea uh, oh. on... Uh, yes, Chez congratulations. Routier. This is a colleague on the French Channel who's, being, who's moving to the France 2 network. And so it became quite a story of uh, topic of conversation because this talk show is one of the premier talk shows in France. So you can see here, I'll try to enlarge... But the headline uh, refers to her by her first name, Vanessa, replacing another uh, another personality, Lea, who that's her first name, in Rukier's show. Rukier is the, the talk show host, and that is his, his surname. surname. So there's Rukier on the left with the Lea Salame, who is uh, leaving and to be replaced by Vanessa. So a lot of media were, were, were talking about the fact that why are the two females being referred to by their first name and uh, the male uh, anchor being referred to by his surname? Very good and question. It is a good question. And Freedom. it's a question actually that comes back <laughs> quite a lot. So, uh, uh, you know, there were a lot of people tweeting about it, saying this is fascinating. Rukie, you know, his surname gets used. Why, why not uh, for females? It's the it, same. It's the same. Sorry, it's the same argument um, I, I saw about um, uh, another channel's breakfast programme about the male being seated on the left mm. and the woman being seated on the right, even though the, the woman presenter was more experienced. Right. Uh, it, it just it, it's almost as though the woman is seen as the sidekick still I, I think in 2016. There's an element of that. And also it's not just for uh, TV personalities. It's for politicians, because this has become an actual real debate in the French media in the last 24 hours. Why do we often why do we so often call women in power by their uh, by their first name. And the examples would be Ségolène Royal, a former presidential candidate, uh, the uh, ecology minister. Headlines often refer to her as Ségolène. Uh, and uh, that is uh, the case for a lot of other female politicians, mm -hmm. such as the, uh, the uh, Najat Valo Valkasem, the mm -hmm. uh, education minister, who is often referred to in headlines as Najat. Now, it's interesting because this isn't uh, th this latest headline about uh, Vanessa and Leah, etc., has drawn attention to it. But in 2015, Slate.fr photoshopped the front page of magazines to show what it would be like if male <laughs> politicians were being called by their first names. So instead of Vals, mm. we're often used, we're very used to seeing headlines of Vals. What about Manuel? Mm -hmm. And it's true that, you know, over here you have uh, François Fillon instead of, uh, instead of uh, Fillon, Alain instead of Juppé, who is mm -hmm. uh, one of the favourites to take over or to be the presidential candidate for the political right. And it's true, you never see that. You never see something... Alain in a headline. You never see Manuel in a headline. So it is true that it's something that really uh, uh, distinguishes the way in which women are treated uh, in newspaper do you, headlines. Do you think it has something to do with the fact that uh, women, including myself, in right. fact, uh, take on sometimes their husband's name when they get married? So the name is less permanent. Well, actually, I was, I was wondering about Hillary Clinton earlier because this isn't right. just a French phenomenon. If you look at... Hillary versus Trump. But indeed, perhaps if Hillary was still Hillary Rodham, we'd be having Rodham versus Trump. And because Bill Clinton is a, is a well, former president, mm -hmm. maybe she distinguishes herself. Even her own campaign slogans and posters and all that have Hillary p potentially to avoid confusion with Bill. Right? Exactly. And you do you do see sometimes. Uh, I think you see Clinton a lot. Rep Hillary and now he's being referred Clinton to as Bill, isn't he? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I think there's anyway, a slight difference. Right. But yeah, in, in France, I, I think it's definitely an issue. That's right. So it has been pointed out and criticised. Uh, Just when we got rid of uh, Mademoiselle, we're all Madame now. That's right. Married well, yeah, Madame Laura. Unfortunately, exactly. sorry. Oh, Laura's <laughs> queen. Now let's move on uh, to uh, because uh, this is also a, a hot issue, isn't it? Uh, in in the Pakistani media, what what's the situation? Right. There? Well, I suppose uh, in a way. Uh, uh, we're realising that uh, these issues that we're dealing with in the French media are still not as serious as some uh, issues being dealt with uh, in uh, in Pakistani society. Uh, men can beat wives lightly, mm. says uh, Pakistan's Islamic Council. Now, that has drawn a huge amount of criticism in Pakistan. Uh, Unsurprisingly. Uh, notably. Uh, so this is, an, luckily, uh, it's an advisory council. It's the Council of Islamic Ideology which advises Pakistan's uh, government on Islamic issues. Its proposals are recognised 
recommendations. Uh, but it says, uh, essentially, a husband should be allowed to lightly beat his wife if she dis- defies his commands. Now, shall I give you some more details? Because this is pretty uh, um, interesting stuff. A husband should be allowed to lightly beat his wife if she defies his commands and refuses to dress up as per his desires, mm. uh, turns down uh, demands for intercourse without any sex- without any religious excuse, or does not take a bath after intercourse or menstrual periods. Well, so uh, that Pretty specific and pretty appalling ver- in equal indeed. measure. And the Express Tribune newspaper in Pakistan has been looking at that and there has been a massive amount of... You've got two seconds to tell us about China. All right, well, China also. Uh, women who are in their late 20s are seen as over the hill if they're not married, so there's a whole booming industry of fake boyfriends. Excellent. All right. <laughs> Does this make you good to feel about feeling about being a woman? Anyway, uh, th- there's a, this story on Medium.com about a guy who posed as a fake boyfriend uh, because the, his... Uh, female friend was getting such harassment from her family. They went there for the Chinese New Year and the mother wasn't convinced. She said, he's too tall and too handsome for you. You need a shorter shorter and more plain man. Thanks, Mum. All right. It's a whole industry (laughs) in China. Fake boyfriends. Very interesting. James, thank you very much indeed. James Creed in there with a very feminist media watch for you today.